Hello everyone, and welcome back to the CPP for Beginners uh, tutorial series. This is Damien speaking. This is going to be episode number 13. We're going to be talking a bit more about loops and stuff today. But before I begin on that, I'd like to give you guys some announcements. Number one, cppforbeginners.com is most likely going to be moved within the next two weeks. Uh, I have a layout that I've been working on. I just need to do a little bit more graphic design, which is my weakness. And uh, once that's done, we're going to move on from there. Um, two. Uh, what was I about to say? Oh, it's been a while since I released my last video. It, I, it's been absolutely crazy. Uh, a lot of things have gone wrong in my personal life. A lot of things have uh, come up unexpectedly. A lot of just BS has happened. So it's unfortunate that things have played out the way they have. It's my hope now that I'll be able to uh, to release the videos in a timely fashion. Um, there might still be a delay here and there by a day or two. Um, I'm going to do my best to release at least three Java videos a week from now on. Um, in the event that I'm late, please don't send death threats. That's all I can say. Um, so without further ado, let's get started now that I've wasted a couple minutes talking. Um, we've talked a little bit about how to use uh, do and while statements, while statements, and for statements. And those are really going to be the backbones of how we uh, do any type of looping in Java. So just to remind you, we have three basic ideas. We have, uh, let's just set int i equal to zero before we begin. 4 runs on the idea that i is equal to 0, or well, you can set i equal to whatever you want, but I just do it to 0 for the initialization. i is less than some number, and then i is being increased. That's the ge like most generic form you're going to see. Um, the while statement, very similar, just i is less than 10. And then you actually will put the i++ in there. And the do while is basically the same as the while, except it ensures one loop through before anything gets executed. So, what I wanted to show you guys is rather than saying less than 10, or something along those lines, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what's known as uh, either a dummy record or a sentinel control loop. Is that? No, that's E. L. And the basic idea of this, uh, I believe, came from the early days of computer science, where basically records would be done sequentially. So, you know, maybe you would have a, a punch card that had, you know, the, the, the details for a transaction that was numbered one and then you'd have two, three, four, five, etc. And when they wanted to stop processing records, they'd put in one with a, a, a transaction number that couldn't possibly happen. For example, negative 999. So the way that you're going to see this inside of a loop is something like this. Um, let's say... we'll make it a while. Uh, so. We're going to do an int up here. Come down here and we'll make a while. And we'll say while i does not equal negative 999. And then what we'll do is we'll say system.out.println. And we're just going to print out i because I'm kind of lazy. But then what we're going to do is uh, maybe do another system.out.println and say enter a value for i. And lastly we'll do i equals input dot next int. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to loop until this is equal to negative 999. Some of you might have already figured this out on your own that you can do something like this. So I don't know why that says zero right there. Oh, because yeah, it hits before I do anything to it. 
Um, so value for i, let's say 12, 14, and I can enter in any number here, as long as it's not... Actually, I think if I enter too large of a number for int to handle, yeah, I can crash it. But aside from that, <laughs> um, the only time it'll break is when I enter in negative 999, and then it will just end the program because there's nothing else for it to do afterwards. So that's the basic idea behind what's known as a sentinel control loop. Um, it's just another sort of scheme for you having additional control on when somebody breaks out of a loop. Now there is another way to do this with what happens to be known as a break. So what we can do instead of this is we can say while I... You know what, I'm going to make two variables for this. Um, going to also make j equal to, well that's k, j equals zero. And we'll say while i does not equal, or no, while i is less than a hundred. So it's going to execute this loop a hundred times, we'll say. And then what we'll do is we'll say um, j equals i times five. And now, knowing that it counts up to 100, perhaps what I'll do is something like this. System.out.println The value of i is, and then we'll put a plus there, then i, and another plus. And the value of j is, plus j, and then that'll do. So each time it goes through this loop, all we need to do then is increase i by 1. And what we'll do is we'll toss up an if statement here, and we'll say if, let's say j is greater than 400, all we're going to do is type the word break, like that, and that's going to allow us to exit out of the loop. And just to put a line afterwards, outside the loop. So we'll give this a quick run and you'll see that it ran. It showed us what i is equal to and j is equal to every iteration through the loop and once j became over 400, mind you it was equal to it here so it did not execute the loop because it was equal to and not greater than so once it hit 405, it went through this loop one more time because it didn't equal 405 until right here. So when it hit this if statement, it executed what's called a break. A break simply breaks out of a loop. That's all it's made for. And then once you're outside of the loop, it'll hit the next statement. So with that being said, there's a lot of times in the future when we're going to use breaks. Um, and learning how to use them effectively is really what's going to make you a good coder. Um, there are other constructs that you can use instead of breaks, but they're extremely taboo and extremely dangerous. I'm talking about GoTo, which I will not be teaching because it encourages many bad coding habits. So, all right. With all of that said, I'm going to make this one a short video. I hope you guys will join me in episode number 14, or thir yeah, this is 13, so 14, um, where I will be introducing case logic, and I'm going to be doing that one in about five minutes, so I'll see you then.